Here my guy Ray of Box and Vance, and I'm very happy here to be joined with uh, the Kingdom mm-hmm. Warrior, uh, Kevin Cronin. Kevin, obviously, uh, there has been an announcement of Gary Hyde show, uh, Nor to Hyde in Cork. Now, it was obviously supposed to be in um, the GEA uh, hall, but now it's going to be moved. And uh, you're going to be on it, because of your first fight that's going to be this side on this island. And it's quite close to home as well. So uh, first of all, uh, how are things with yourself? Yeah, yeah, and good. Um, good now, thanks. Uh, yeah, nice to be, nice to be back fighting in Ireland. Nice to have it close to home. Um, definitely nice to have it close to home. Don't make weight cuts and everything. It's more bit easier now than flying over, to, uh, flying over to Europe and trying to make weight. And like I was even actually just looking the last day. I didn't even realize it was so long since my last fight. It's been like eight or nine months. Yeah. <laughs> Back again, trying to knock off ring rust, even though I thought I was active. But obviously, I was going to be fighting in December as well. But yeah, look, it's just nice to be back home. And um, obviously, thanks to Gary and Box and Ireland, Joe, for giving me the shock for Cork, just up the road, you know, I can finally get back and get used to being in front of my fans again. Yeah, yeah. So your fans won't have to drive too far. <clears throat> no, 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 up hmm. the road. So, um, how has training been for you? Because obviously, the last time you fought was in Spain last year. So, uh, how how has things been for you in terms of training? Have you just kept yourself ticking over? Yeah, no. Look, training's training's been good because um, I wouldn't say I kept myself ticking over, you know, because uh, we were preparing for a fight in December, so we were in camp, like you know, more than ticking over. We were full guns blazing, we were getting the weight down. Mm-hmm. We were we were um, getting great sparring, very good sparring, and um, we were working for an eight rounder. And um, I'm not actually sure what happened there. I think Leonard had uh, an eight rounder for me. Uh, I could be wrong in this, but I think your point, something happened with an opponent and then they had to go down to a six-rounder and then to go down to a four-rounder. So four-rounder was my last resort and then mm-hmm. two days out from it, then um, something happened with the opponent from the mm-hmm. four-rounder. Mm-hmm. Um, it, was, uh, it was unfortunate, but look, mm-hmm. it was all experience. Um, every camp is an experience. So just put it in the bag and yeah. bring it into the next fight, you know? Yeah. Um. <clears throat> Jamie Morrissey and Robert Burke fought um, in the Celtic Clash. And uh, that was a super middleweight to them fought. It was a very, very good fight. I was there now. Um, first of all, what did you think of the fight yourself when, if you watched it back? Yeah, it was a good fight. Look, you got to give props to both lads. They took them very short notice. Like, you know, there isn't many, um, there isn't many people to take a fight in that notice. Um, mm-hmm. Fair play to them. Yeah, they left it all in there and... Uh, Yes, you got to give it to the four rounders. And they fought. So it's hard to, um, you know, when you're fighting the six rounder, you want to be prepping for a six rounder. So, uh, like, even the rematch is there a rematch scheduled? I think so. Like, Joe, could be a whole different fight, you know, you wouldn't know. Um, mm. so be different between six and four, but no, big props to old fellas for taking the fight and um, so short notes, yeah. After the fight, um, they kind of had an embrace with each other um, when I was there and they kind of said, look, if uh, they were interested in fighting each other again, they kind of mentioned your name as well, if you could make the way. <clears throat> um, you've, your name's been mentioned in that mix of the two of them. First of all, do you see yourself making super middleweight and fighting either of them? Yeah. Um, well, look, obviously I'm not going to jump the head and say, Oh, I'm definitely going to be fighting someone because look, we were having a conversation before this, and mm-hmm. you can't. I don't set my sights on a certain person anymore because of the fact that nothing's guaranteed in this sport. So I'm just looking at what I want to fight for. But uh, just, mm-hmm. yeah, I do think I'll probably end up fighting one them. Yeah, um, mm-hmm. do I think I'll make super middleweight? I don't say I'll do something if I'm not going to do it. And I said I'm going to do super middleweight for my next fight. And I'm gonna do super middleweight for my next fight. I'm gonna make 168 pounds, and it's the only way in showing people things like that mm-hmm. is by yeah. doing it. You know, if you don't <laughs> do it, they're just gonna question it. If you make the weight and you fight in the card, like there's talks of Jamie and, and Robert fighting on that card. Can you imagine um the winner fighting yourself afterwards or or even the loser? Um can you imagine or hasn't been chats about that at all? There hasn't been chats about it. But I think it's kind of a thing that 
all of us in our head are probably saying, all right, you know, mm -hmm. Kevin's fighting 168, the boys are fighting 168. Um, are they fighting on it or are they definitely fighting on it? I actually, uh, 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 no, I'm not it. saying definitely. I just, I just said I've heard that uh, the possibly they could be fighting on it, but um, it's, not a, it's not a short thing. Yeah. Well, look, I'm game, you know, 168. Yeah. Obviously, I want to get down now and feel this weight um, and try out this weight. I don't see why I wouldn't feel good at the weight because I haven't exactly mm -hmm. the fight in December. Do you remember I made the weight? I said I'd make the weight anyway just after putting in such a camp. So mm -hmm. um, I made it. I won't say I made it easy, but if I had to make a lighter weight for that fight, we would have done it, you know, if it needed yeah. be, which is hints why I said after that kind of took Christmas. I said, I'd see where the weight gets to after Christmas now. I didn't milk it, but I um, I still enjoyed myself, I'd say. Um, yeah. And I checked the weight in, this, in January and I said, you know, my my body's changing. It's obviously getting used into this routine, you know, because I used to be a super heavyweight. Like, so I was yeah. not used to being all this clean eating and uh, conditioning. It's obviously building this kind of getting down into these type of weights now. And mm. where my weight was at, it was like a lot lighter in what I'd usually be at starting off a camp before I go into a light heavyweight fight. So I said, you know what? If I'm going to try super middleweight, let's do it next. So not, there's no point tiptoeing around it and saying, oh, I'll do it in a fight or two, or we'll, no, we'll wait around, we'll get another few fights. Nah, I'm just doing now. I'm just going to do it now. Get out of the way. Feel good at the weight. Then, yeah, I'd be up for fighting the win, 100%. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I saw online a uh, there was an article from Irishboxing.com and uh, it seemed that Robert Burke had, had commented on it and you kind of gave your your response, uh, not so much of an argument, but uh, you just said, look, I, I haven't, I think, you, I think you said along the lines, I haven't really asked for the fight, I haven't called anyone out or anything like that and I wasn't offered it. Is that kind of the, the discussion that he's had? Yeah, you're, you're on the right line. It was something like... Um... I was I was obviously doing an interview with irishboxing.com and it was mentioned would I be interested in the winner and I said yeah I'd be interested in I would yeah oh, obviously I said I need to win my next fight you can't overlook anyone you know no matter who it is so I said but yeah hundred percent you know I'd be interested um I'd be definitely up for it yeah mm -hmm. uh, in the obviously posted that and uh, uh okay I, I can't actually remember why it was something like um. Who, it was something like who have I fought you know, to kind of put me in the position, you know, after him and Morrissey fought. But uh, I just said, I just said it was like I wasn't offered that fight, you know. I never got a phone call for the fight with either you, either when both your opponents pulled out. So I couldn't have exactly had that fight with either you, either. So I was just kind of, I was just stating my opinion on what he had to say. That was it, really. There was no, yeah, yeah, yeah. No yeah. In it, like, you know, it wasn't a, it wasn't an argument or uh, I wasn't going to get you kind of thing. It was just uh, him giving his side, me giving mine. And <laughs> you can see when some, when two people just give their opinions, how quickly it goes away. Like, you know, it was just like, fair enough. But we were just, all right, fair enough. <laughs> Conversation <laughs> over. Simple as. <laughs> um, how, far, how fast did you sell the tickets? Uh, it was just under 48 hours. Um just under 48 hours, I was trying, I was kind of, I, I was hinting in, oh yeah, you know, I'd be able to get more, I'd be able to get more, but then I was on the Gary Hyde today, and he was like, Kevin, sold out, because I was like, <laughs> oh fuck, <laughs> I was like, I, you know, with these shows, when people are saying, it'll sell out fast, I said, all right, I'd say it'll sell out fast, I said, but surely now there'll be two or three hundred tickets for the next two or three weeks, and then he was like, it's sold out, I was like, <laughs> having to go yeah. back and tell people then, Right, your ticket's not guaranteed. Yours isn't guaranteed, you know. But yours are, but look, hopefully, um, hopefully we'll get um, hopefully, well, look, there are obviously a load of boxes and got their tickets, and maybe some of them might be able to sell tickets. So hopefully, we'll be able to get a few like that. Yeah. Uh, but either way, look, I I saw my tickets. I've yet again proven my point. You know, the following there, if you want to come to Gary, you know, for a show, you know, the tickets will sell fast there. Mm -hmm. um, but look, that's I suppose that's. That's what I'm taking for my ticket sales. I'm just happy to have a gang going up for me, shout me on. Um, to, you know, I really, it's nice to have a big gang, but at the end of the day, no matter how many people are there, you have to perform in the ring. So mm -hmm. whether tickets are sold out or not, you still got to do the job.
But yeah, yeah it was uh, just under or just over twenty four hours. So it was, uh, just I think I announced my fight at like was it like two o'clock or something. They were sold out by like twelve o'clock in the next day. But I just presumed I would have had the option of getting maybe another batch of tickets in kind of thing. <laughs> I've a bit of a left field question for you. So um. Yeah, Emma Brennan this week has, has been quite vocal. He wants to find a matchroom show and uh, he says he's going to be turning over to the professional ranks. Um, I've spoken to him personally a few times and um, he's looking to fight at super middleweight because he's more time to cut the weight rather than fighting a light heavy or whatever in, in amateurs. He's told me he wants to jump into domestic fight straight away, like and fight for a belt straight away. Uh, he's no problem. Like you'd seen him talking with Thomas O'Toole and that. And, and you're kind of in the position there where you can start fighting for belts very soon, um, in eight rounders, and you possibly could be fighting the same weight as him, super middleweight. And he's open to anyone. Uh, he's mentioned a few names to me. Would you ever be interested in that fight? I know he's going to be based in New York, but he said he'd be willing to travel to, to Ireland or you traveling to. New York or some stage to fight him. Would you would you ever consider that fight? Look, we're on the game for the same thing. It, like you know, fighters aren't not gonna fight each other. So all these fights. Mm-hmm. Yeah, of course. We'd fight any of each other, like you know, Yeah. <laughs> Put me in a metro in New York 100 mm-hmm. you percent know, We obviously all believe in ourselves. So yeah, we'd be up for all these fights. Mm-hmm. You know. So obviously you have played <laughs> You could use quite a big following and um in Kerry, and then of course, he, he, he's a massive name from being an Olympian. So, uh, he, like, if he's saying that you want to fight Thomas or two so quickly, like, um, which is great, um, no reason why, why you couldn't um get it on. Uh, obviously, in certain circumstances, if, if it'll be if the people having the show will have it on their show, and what level of a card is it going to be? Is it going to be TV or not? Depends, really, but. So you you'd be open to that fight, I imagine. Anyway, like you just said, I'm more, look. I'm open to all fights, all fights. Yeah. That's it. You know, get my fight at one six eight. Once I feel good there, that's obviously as I stated. That's why I'm going down there now. Get the feel for one six eight. If I feel good down there, then I'm open for all fights. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Right. Okay. Um, well, Kevin, I'm going to be going in the call. So. I'm looking forward to going in and uh, I'll meet you. I think it's the first time I'm meeting the flesh, actually, funny enough. So, uh, yeah. Um, so, yeah, um, looking forward to it and I'll uh, chat to you very soon. Nice one. Thanks very much, Kieran. Thanks, Kevin. Thanks.